Hey everyone, when I think about life and what is most precious to me, I think about my family, I think about my church family, I think about my friends and my students. But if I'm really honest, I think about my own comfort. I think about my desire for approval. What about you? What is it that's most precious to you? What would you die for? What are you living for? What gets you out of bed every morning? I understand these questions can be heavy, but such is life right now. See, we live in such a world that is chaotic right now. Maybe you're feeling the very weight of this world on your shoulders. Or maybe you're even feeling the very weight of your own sin. See, I'm convinced that what we need is something beyond ourselves, something that is eternal to live for, something eternal to die for. You see, in the Bible, in Psalm 63, King David shows us what our greatest desire should be. In the context of, our, of this chapter, um, history tells us that David um, wrote this psalm while he was on a run for his life. His son Absalom was seeking to kill him. And this is what David says in Psalm 63. He says, oh, God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in a sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. You see what David says there? You see his greatest desire? His greatest desire was God. He says, oh God, you are my God. And he's seeking after God. Did you guys catch what David said that he would die for? David said that, that God's steadfast love is better than life. You see what David is saying here, um, the word steadfast love in our Bibles can be translated to as hasad. And what hasad means is that it's describing for us God's character. It's describing for us who God is. He is love. He is faithful. You see, when, when David said that, God, your love is better than life, your steadfast love, what he's saying is that his relationship with God was so intimate, so real, that it was far greater than anything this world has to offer. It's better than um, any status, any comfort, any power, any glory, any earthly treasure. You see, this human life cannot give us hasad. Or this human life cannot take it away from us. You see, God's has said it's his covenantal love. It's a love that he where God promises to always love us no matter what. He promises to it's unconditional where we cannot break God's promise of his love for us. See, my question is for you, would you die for God's steadfast love? You see, the good news is, is that you don't have to die because the God has already done that through the cross of Jesus Christ. Now you have access to this unrelenting, never giving up, always and forever love. Because of what Christ has done on the cross, he has taken your place. He has died in your place. He has demonstrated this hasad on the cross where God punishes sin and he forgives sin. So you are forgiven because of what Christ has done for you. What kind of love is this? Can you imagine what this world will look like if everyone after watching this decided in their hearts to believe that God's love is far greater than anything this life has to offer? Imagine if no matter what happens in this world, no matter what life throws your way, whether you experience success or failure, if you win or lose, if you're running in the wilderness or you're in the comfort of a palace, that everything this world throws our way will drive our faith deeper into the love of our faithful God. Imagine what we can do together if we allowed our current circumstances in this world and in our life to drive us deeper into faith in God's love.